Good morning, everybody. It's Mike, KD2KOG, part of the technical support staff here at SDRplay.com. We're going to do a video on installing and configuring SDR Console. SDR Console is a third-party, free-for-use app that is compatible with the RSP1, RSP1A, RSP2, RSP2 Pro, and the RSP Duo in single tuner mode. This is going to be a lengthy video. It's going to show the settings that I like to apply when using SDR console. This is not a, a video that it's, you don't have to use my settings, but this is the way I like to set it up. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is I go to Google and I type SDR console and I go straight to SDR-radio.com. From SDR console, you can go to software and go to downloads. Scroll down, select the version, and this is the latest release from November 8th, 2019. Today is November 10th. So I usually head over to Dropbox and 64-bit. And some people get confused when they go to this Dropbox section. I usually go to Download and Direct Download. And it starts downloading right away. Now, as I said, this video is going to be a little bit lengthy. And it's how I like to set up console. All right, download is complete. We're going to click on the installer. We can close out the web page. Okay, we'll click next. I agree. Next. And let it install in its default location. Okay, that's complete. We're not going to start the program yet. I'm going to go to my start menu, go to the SDR console tools folder, and I'm going to reset console. First thing I do is I go to the registry editor. I click on SDR radio V3 and I delete that entry. I close it out. I go to user files. If you do this the way I'm doing it, make sure you back up your uh, frequency list. So I select everything and I hit delete and I reset the layout and then I continue with the startup and this is going to give me a fresh slate for SDR console. Under definitions, let's do that again. Let's relaunch console because I, I don't want to confuse you guys. going to click on definitions, we're going to click on search, and we're going to go to SDR play. It found the device, we're going to click add, it found my RSP1A, and I click save. Now I click the device one time again, and I select the bandwidth, and then I'll click start. Okay, right from here, I stop the radio. Now I expand the IF display. I set my output device to my Steinberg. I go to the view tab, which is here, and I click on auto center. So this way when I zoom in and out of the spectrum, it will auto center. I don't use RDS. I do put the statistics up. I do enable the clock and I enable UTC. Okay, let's just go through all the tabs, make sure everything is looking correct. Receive, that's fine. Okay, now I go back to the home tab, double check all of that. Okay, now I go into tools, options, and I start from the bottom. I'm not using USB relay, so I can skip that section. I'm not using identities or changing the startup options, so we can skip that. I'm not using a rig, so we're not going to enable the auto mute and tuning step size. I select 250 for sideband on both of these. Well, actually, all three. AM is fine at 1K, CW is fine at, at 10 Hertz, and those modes I don't really I don't change the step size. General, that's fine. Recording, I leave that as is. That's fine at default. 
and performance. Let's just double check. That's good. Display, I leave the FFT windowing at the default, which is Hamming. Okay, I show the frequency and RX details. That will show up over here when I enable it. If I want to have uh, the zero as an O, I can enable that. If I want to change the frequency range, that's fine at default. Now, under smoothing, I don't, my personal preference is I don't like the waterfall, uh, I'm sorry, the spectrum display to be averaged or smooth. So I go to this option here where it says triangle, triangular, and I select none. I also like to keep it on hang and decay. That's my own personal preference. Palettes, you can enable the John uh, Herman additional ones, but there's a new one that Simon just added that's really good. So I usually don't enable this. CUDA is enabled, and that's fine. Let's go to controllers. If you have a teammate controller, which I do, you can enable it here. And I usually select this blue. Uh, MIDI, I'm not using a MIDI controller, so that doesn't apply to me. If I'm using a CSV userless browser, I can do so by enabling COM1, just like I do in SDR Uno. So that's enabled there. Audio. Let's see, everything is fine, I believe, at default. And we can click op uh, OK. So let's click play again. Let's go to home. Let's move this. And let's change the RF gain to about six. Auto is fine. Uh, we will enable the notch. And bias T, usually I disable the option to enable or disable the bias T because I don't want to click it by accident. So I go into radio configuration, I go to bias T and I uncheck enable bias T and it should disappear the next time I start SDR console. I then go to view, I go to color and I select this one here. I usually click auto and I can zoom in and out and adjust the color profile by selecting auto or if I want to adjust it myself here I can do so for the contrast and the gain and let's just see if there's any any uh, broadcast going on let's increase the gain by let's see let's go to six should be good and let's we might have to increase an option here let me just see if I can find it it's been a while since I used console resolution is fine at four times Okay, another option, let's just stop this here, is the modes. So we will go to mode. I'll click on the three dots and I like to enable AM. And I usually bounce between AM and synchronous AM. And that's basically it. That's my default setting for SDR console. If you guys have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to answer them. Thanks for watching, 73.